Most people are familiar with the Harlem Renaissance, but many haven't heard of the Chicago Black Renaissance. See, the Chicago Black Renaissance was not as nationally known as the Harlem Renaissance, but it doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't important. The Chicago Black Renaissance was a time when black leaders sprung up and took initiative to what they believed. This movement in history led Chicago to a very beneficial outcome, primarily for black communities, but not to mention many other people throughout Chicago as well. Although migration from the South was already in place, the Great Migration was the greatest contributor of black population in the North and was a turning point in which many of the African Americans in the South moved up North to cities like Chicago. The major reason that many blacks moved to Chicago was because of lynching, discrimination and oppression and the severe poverty they were undergoing in the South. Chicago was a promised land that will supposedly relieve blacks from discrimination. Other unrecognized reasons why blacks from the South were moving up North was thanks to artists like Charles C. Dawson that partook in many influential acts. Charles C. Dawson was born in 1889 in Brunswick, Georgia. He died in 1981 in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Charles C. Dawson was an inspiring artist from the 1930s that successfully changed Chicago's perspective on the African American communities and culture. During the summer of 1912, Charles C. Dawson was working for the Pullman Company in a buffet club car. While working at the Pullman Company, Charles saved his money so he could attend the Art Institute of Chicago. At age 26, Dawson moved to New York, where he became the first African American to be admitted to the Art Students League. During the 1930s, the power of art was everywhere. Art surrounded people's communities, cities, and culture, especially the African American culture. Historical music that we know today, such as jazz, gospel, and blues, emerged immensely during this time period, and many musical groups were created, such as the Creole Jazz Band. Many black visual artists, those included Charles C. Dawson, trained at the School of Art Institute of Chicago, and created large murals, portraits, and landscapes of Chicago and the black culture within. A grand supporter of the Chicago Black Renaissance and of young black artists was the Chicago Defender, an African-American based newspaper that quickly spread the world after seeing the incredible work they publicized created by the upcoming artist. The Chicago Defender also fought against racism, discrimination, and fought for equal rights. They were a newspaper corporation that caused controversy for its bold headlines and publication, but they stood up for what was right, and at the time, most were afraid to do that. As Charles C. Dawson helped the youth flourish their different forms of art during the Renaissance, he himself became even more recognized for all of his work. Dawson always brought others up while bringing himself up. When Dawson created the famous pamphlet for John Baptiste Pointe du Sable, founder and first settler of Chicago, he had one important goal, and that was to show the world that a black man can have power and be significant. Dawson depicted du Sable as an incredible, independent, strong man that was able to conquer anything. And in that way, both the Dusabo image and Dawson grew. Charles continued to create art out of his feelings and created strong statements through each and every single one of his artworks. Charles C. Dawson was dedicated and assisting to lead a very influential movement that changed many of the perspective of others to have a positive outlook to black communities and become more accepting of the black culture. Dawson partially introduced a movement to southern states, specifically black people, to move to north cities like Chicago. Charles began to work for beauty companies creating persuasive artistic logos and advertisements to get people to purchase beauty products, such as makeup and hair utilities. He primarily worked for a company named Valmore Products and Annie Malone's Poro College, both which focus on the depiction of beauty in the black standards. Dawson created hundreds of variations of products of all which portrayed a positive perspective on the beauty of black women and the powerful love between a black woman and a black man. During this time, Dawson lacked support from people like Morton Newman, owner of the Valmore Company, who refused to allow Dawson to be known for his work. Dawson had no say, and being the activist he was, 
he didn't allow for that to affect him and he continued to pursue his goals and focus on what truly was important to him. Charles was not only an artist, an entrepreneur, a leader, an illustrator, and an inspirational figure to the black community, but he was also a very intellectual author. He wrote a detailed autobiography, which can now be found at the DuSable Museum in Brownsville, Chicago, a children's book named the ABCs of Great Negroes. Charles C. Dawson was part contributor of migration to Chicago and the Chicago Black Renaissance. He was an influential artist that pushed the movement forward among other great leaders. He empowered black communities by depicting them as successful, powerful people of society. Most importantly, his goal was to steer others who had a negative perspective on blacks away from the stereotypes. Charles also urged the idea of acceptance of the black communities in the south side of Chicago. Although Dawson's accomplishments are unquestionable, there are still others who oppose of his success because of his ethnicity. As he managed a couple of architectural exhibitions at the Institute, he watched many young artists flourish and in that way he became someone that influenced them a lot throughout their careers. Everyone at school accepted him with open arms and assisted him as they understood his urge and passion for art. Dawson was not only a leader in the art community or help others migrate from the south to the north, but he also served as a lieutenant in the segregated armed forces during World War I. During this time period, Chicago was facing a two-sided conflict between African Americans and whites. Dawson sought the issues and took matters into his own hands. He took the initiative to assist the black community economically also and become very flexible, working as a salesman for a Chicago downtown firm and gave both blacks and whites advice as well as serving them. Although some people were not aware of the existence of Charles C. Dawson or many contradict the meanings behind his pieces of art or his contributions, Dawson truly helped many by speaking up for those who did not have a voice. He spoke up about oppression, discrimination, and equal rights despite the fear many acquired during the time. Dawson brought a new light, a beginning, and he brought his ideas to both the growing artists and black individuals. Those who have studied Charles C. Dawson have come to understand the situations of the Black Renaissance and the reasons he felt the need to provide positive perspectives of the Black culture. Charles C. Dawson felt the need to make a stand, and that is exactly what he did.